wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked tones, you know what I'm saying? Even the temple, the temple on a pull down like this, even if it's like, even if we do it with a cable, it's like, you don't, you have to control the tempo out of the bottom on a lift like this. So if I'm trying to trap on lat, when I'm trying to tuck elbows in and set chest up and shoulders tucked down, sternum lifted, I'm engaged in my mid back. I almost wanna, I wanna go up. I wanna sink down. I wanna hold this tension. I wanna fight that tension going up and then let my hands go. So it's almost like a progression of like flexing, letting out the flex, let go, drop. So you gotta play with the tempo of lifts to understand the tension, right? So if I pull too, if I let up too quick from the bottom there, it pulls me out. I can't let my lats relax open and let my hand drift up, right? So it's like understanding where to pin stuff down. On some pulls, it's like this, people pull this machine. As you can see this machine, when you pull it, oh, that's too fucking heavy to do that. So as you can see, this pull, when it's pulling, is diverging, it's spreading away. So it's moving apart right away when you pull. So why would you want to pull straight down on something like that? When this thing's here, people are pulling down on it. And it's fine, you're gonna get back, but why don't I follow the path of where that bar is going and pull open? So as I'm opening, my shoulder's peeling out wider. I'm not trying to pull my shoulder down. I'm pulling open. So my first movement is my elbow cracking out and my hand dragging wide. It's not my elbow dropping down and pulling in, right? It gets back to it's like being conscientious and understanding like the pathway that the fucking machine's on that you're using. Understand it. Like have no weight on it at first and see where this thing goes. Even if I take this and I move this here, it's arcing. It's like this. It's a half circle. So why would I pull it straight down? Again, I would open and squeeze. I wouldn't pull straight down on this. It's stupid. It's not even the path that it's on. If I pull down on this, it doesn't go anywhere. Like, but if I push open on it, it moves around, right? It travels on an opening, spreads apart. This is the only industry in the fucking world. Well, probably not the world. But this industry is just full of like pseudo scientists, people that have no background or no basis of information. Like there's legitimate people with legitimate backgrounds in this sport who went to school for like nutrition, biology, chemistry, whatever it might be. And these people are, are nowhere near as popular as like some fucking bikini coach who puts his athletes on fucking like every SARM under the sun that has no data to back it up, has no long-term side effects, research done on it, or like drugs that are masculizing and have no idea how long they're supposed to be on them, how long they shouldn't be on them. It's like, you're just like trusting these people because they had one athlete who looked great and you think that, oh, if they made so-and-so look great, they must be able to make me look great. It's like, that person looked great before Fuckface got a hold of them and will continue to look great after Fuckface is gone as we see in this sport right now. One, one top athlete leaves a coach and goes to an next coach Top athlete stays top athlete. And when they leave that coach and go to the next coach, they're still top athlete. So these coaches that are stepping stones along the way, unless you've had that motherfucker since he stepped in the gym, he or she stepped in the gym, you are not the cause of that physique. You are merely like along for the ride, right? People out there need to understand, like, don't judge a coach off their best client. Same with trainers. Don't judge your, don't judge a trainer off their best, their best client. It's off their worst or their most experienced or their like least genetically gifted. If they can help that person improve to something that they're proud of and looks a certain way or has development, has muscle, whatever, if they can bring from not from someone from nothing to something, that's impressive. It's not impressive that these like gimps that don't want to think for themselves go to these coaches and they already have great physiques they're just mentally they're mental midgets 
need someone to hold my hand and tell me how much chicken I can eat in a meal. I won't eat a fucking gram more. Like, oh, that's gonna make the difference. Tell me I can have sugar-free barbecue sauce and not real barbecue sauce. Just because they have these people that are attached to them doesn't mean that they have any, any reason, any, any t attachment to their success. There's another movement thing here with back. So obviously this is getting heavier. Like it's not like some fucking record breaking weight, nor do I give a shit. But it's like, you have to understand that if you're gonna hold, so if I'm gonna do this like people preach to do it, okay? This is how people preach to do it. So I'm gonna lock down, I'm gonna get tight. I'm gonna go forward really slow. And I'm gonna flex into my lap. Ooh. Like my range of motion, holy fuck. So I'm gonna lock here. I'm not gonna be able to overextend. I'm just gonna get to this point. I'm gonna pull down again. Ooh, it's like, that's literally all I can move. I'm not even fucking joking on that. I'm not making a fucking joke. That's my range. Cause I'm trying to flex my arm to pull this handle down and pull my lat, which is impossible. So it's like, if I'm, if I have this feeling of being free here, so my weight's in my feet digging up into this pad. So I'm jammed up into this knee pad. So I'm tall. I'm able to roll my shoulders back and set here. If my shoulders happen to pop out of my body, rise up, guess how fucking easy it is for me to tuck them back down? Because I'm driving up through here. This is where the pull comes from, guys. Not your fucking hand. This is your, pair, this is your base of power. This is why this is here. That's why it's here. To keep you from flying out of the seat and to be able to dig your feet into the ground and drive up into it to pull yourself up. It's mimicking a fucking chin up. It's what it is, man. It's like, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna blunt that, I'm gonna hold all my weight here. Look how loose I am here. So I go, Arr! there's nothing in my feet. Whereas here, I'm jammed up into here. You can see it's pushed. This is completely collapsed. As I'm toes into the ground and my upper body's tall. So I'm gonna drive up into my, into my knee pad and pull down. That's why I can hang here with no tension because it's all here, right? So I can put five plates on that if I'm strong enough to move it and my form doesn't fall apart. And it's the same thing here. I'm digging into here. That's why it's here. It's not there for looks, man. It's not like a fucking seat belt where it's like, oh, now I'm in here. I'm, I can't possibly fall out. It's like, no, jam up into it. Cab raise right into it. My toe is off, my heel's off the ground. I'm spiked in my calf. I'm pushing up into here so I can be here. I can move anywhere I want because I'm stabilized here, not in my core. You guys are missing that. It's on everything. Any fucking pull that's above your head, vertical, even like that fucking Nautilus that everyone thinks is some back fucking wizardry machine. Like, holy fuck, man. Let's see, like here, I can lay back here with no tension because it's all here. If I didn't have these here and I tried to lay back, I can't, right? So I'm digging into here. So I'm locked in my lower back and arched. I can hold these here all day. I'm holding with fingertips. I'm pulling with fingertips because I'm just sliding down because I'm staying stiff in my feet, my quads up through. So my body, my upper body's free to move and rock and roll around and pull. That's why pulls, that's why movements that we, that I do and that people who train with me do, they look so smooth because we understand where to put tension. You're being taught to dig your feet in, dig up into here. So your base of power is set already. Anything that happens around it is free movement. This is where I'm locked down. I'm digging into these fucking pads. And it's like to see people like, I'm actually gonna do it because it pisses me off. I'm not gonna do this because I don't wanna waste my fucking time. But I think that people, they misconstrue the effectiveness of this machine. Like there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's a great machine. But it's like, you guys don't understand, this machine is, is setting you up on an angle, on a trajectory that's where you're supposed to be when you pull. Which is like, if you look from the side here, if I'm sitting up tall here even, where is my hip relative to my shoulder? Behind it. So they, they know people are stupid and they wanna lean back 
So we made it so the seat's angled, angled. So even if I sit on it, like and I have no clue what I'm doing, I'm already pitched forward. I can't sit up tall. I'm naturally here, right? So they're like, okay, now we got them in the right position of having their hip behind their shoulder, which is the key to everything. I don't know how, how many times I can say that. Your hip behind your shoulder elicits back activation. It is fucking proven. It is a fact. There's no debating it. You can have your hip roll under, you can lean back and you can pull more and you can engage back, yes. But optimal back activa activation is literally your hip has got to be at least offset in your shoulder. You don't need to be here. It just has to be a differential. It can't be straight. Because you're going to end up falling or leaning, right? So if I hold this with one arm, because everyone's so obsessed with this one arm fucking garbage. So they all do this one arm and they all set here. So I'm set here and they're, again, look at my feet. So I'm not digging into shit. I'm just locked into my shoulder and my upper body's holding all this weight. And I'm sitting here and I'm going, and you think you're isolating lat. When I can't sit in that position without my trap firing, without my neck firing, without my upper chest pec, like my pec firing, to keep me here. And even if I go loose here and I let out, and I drop into here, my pull down into my lat, it isn't about how much I pull down into my lat. It's how much I can get my chest up and clear elbow back in that same motion. So my elbow can end up here, here, that's great, but it's way more effective and way more of a contraction when I'm here with my chest up. So the elbow's going to the same spot. You're just trying to circumvent movement and you think that I, by being here and isolating and pulling my elbow down, I engage my lat, but I engage my lat in a very, for lack of a better word, because this isn't it, like a very two dimensional manner in the sense that it's like my lat engages, but it's like when my, when my bicep engages, and I do this. So yeah, it's going, it's engaged, but is it engaged like this? You know what I mean? It's, it's, that's what we're talking about. That's the level of contraction. So like, yes, I'm taking my shoulder out of this. I'm locking into my lat here, whatever it is you guys do. A lot of you guys pin head this way. You don't even pin head that way, which would allow you to get deeper into the pull. So you pin head here and then you're here and you're up. So it's like, I just keep my chest in this one position and I just drag in till I feel this sensation that feels like my lower lat. Cause I can feel it too. I'm not fucking retarded, right? So it's like, you have to understand that sensation, that little squeeze is like, we're talking like, if maximum contraction is the way that I promote and a lot of way of other guys promote of being able shoulder to be able to rock back and through and chest rock up through and locking in here, I can damn near cramp my lat doing that. Like that bottom part of that contraction lifting up through and rocking, my lat is cramping. It will literally seize. Whereas yours is like going, eh. it's like your, this is, this is the analogy. I said this the other day to someone. It's like taking a lighter and you know how you can like flick, 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 catch the flame? Yeah. That's what you're doing. So you're like, tch, 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 and you catch, ooh, caught it. Tch, tch, tch. It's just like, I'm, I'm never really lighting the flame. It's just not igniting, right? Whereas here it's like, it's one pull, it's tch, my lighter's on. I let it out, tch, I put it on, I engage again, right? So it's the same thing, you're, you're wasting time and you're, and you're over, over bracing and over complicating the lift, right? Bracing and locking down on things and, and being super rigid and all this stuff. The only time I see it being hyper effective to hyper brace or to really lock down is if your ass is about to pull 800 pounds or your ass is about to squat something you've never squatted and you need to fucking get that body in perfect alignment and like tight and locked down and move on the stiffest line you've ever moved on. Like, and keep that posture, keep that integrity. But for these guys who are like, like they're this is a plate and a quarter. Like, if, even if there's three plates on this, I have leverage on this machine. I can lean back and I can hold it here. That's the design of it, right? So it's meant not to be absolute weight on you. It's moving on a path. It's not like I just pick this up and boom, it's dead weight, bang, back down. 
it's on a whole path and an arc and a lift and a mo an arm. So it's like, it's displacing weight for me. I don't need to go here and go, <laughs> and I'm here and I'm like, Grr. like why do I need to flex that hard with, with a weight that's not that heavy? When the sequence of movement will just allow the muscle to contract. And you're gonna get like no reps. Like, you understand that like, you're telling me that a, a muscle that's not receiving oxygen is more powerful than the one that is? So you're holding your breath, not breathing, or taking these short little <coughs> breaths, like, like you're pumping out rabbit shits or something, like, tick, 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 tick. and it's like, and you're holding it, you're telling me that you're gonna get, yeah, it's gonna be more effective, your muscle's gonna be more apt to move and be efficient and like expand and contract when it's not receiving any oxygen of any kind, your body. It's like literally like you're choking yourself. Like you're not efficient in that, in that plane, right? Well, it's just, I don't, it's all like, like I said before, it's all about people's styles of movement. I understand that everyone has their own style. I just disagree with that completely. So if you're someone that promotes that, you promote it and you have your reasonings behind it and I'm not gonna badmouth you. you, you're doing what you're doing. You can badmouth me for having movement, which is like every other sport has movement. Not one sport in the world do we hold our breath while we perform the sport. So like, I'm not a, like, let's put it this way. If I'm a running back in the NFL, everyone watching can probably understand what a running back is. They're the guys that get the handoff from the quarterback and run down the, try not get tackled. So if I'm sitting, I'm standing in my running back stance and I'm here and I'm waiting for the ball, I'm standing here relaxed. So right when the ball snapped, do I go like, and just, and as soon as I get the ball, I'm running down the field going like, like, no. I'm breathing, I'm moving, I'm reacting. I'm loose in my movement so that I can make quick decisions. I can like change direction very fast. I'm relaxed and calm in my body, I'm not tense. But then you guys come to this sport of bodybuilding, which bodybuilding and lifting correlates to, to actual athletics. And you go, and then, so these people that move freely and do sequences of movements, whether it's tennis players, baseball players, football players, they're freed in their movement. And, they're, and it's a sequence of movements, everything they do is very smooth, very like efficient. Then you, then you bring them into a setting where they're supposed to get stronger or more efficient in, in these movements and you tell them to not relax. You tell them to tense up. You tell them to lock down and brace, brace super hard, super engage their core, like somehow their spine is made of like sticks and it's just gonna snap if it's not like completely locked down. And it's like, and then you're telling them to move on this like really rigidness Everything's rigid, rigid, like rigid, rigid. And then they go on the field and they're like, I catch a ball, I throw the thing, I hit fucking dingers out of the park. I'm not like, the bitch doesn't come at me and I go, fucking motherfucker, and hit that thing. Like, it's like, so you guys that are preaching this, or like this whole adage of like, oh, bodybuilding is, bodybuilding is training for sport, it's not sport. It's like, nope, they correlate to each other. They all go together. It's all part of the same family, right? So that's why people are like, oh, can you, does your lifting correlate to, does, would it help athletes? Da, 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 da. It's like, yeah, does the athlete have a, a, do a sport where they have to move within a sequence of movements or understand like being fluid, being elastic, being pliable? Then yeah, I don't, I don't see how my style doesn't correlate more than anyone else has to be very honest with you because my style is all about movement and creating areas where I understand where I'm holding tension, where I'm not holding tension. So if I'm a running back on the field, of course I'm not just like, of course I'm not holding my breath, but of course I'm also not just loose as a goose, like, ah, right. Ooh, like this. Obviously I'm engaged and I'm aware and I'm able to move, like I know how to embrace and engage in my core when I need to, to change directions on stuff or to take a hit or to like spin off someone or do whatever it might be, stiff arm someone, jump over someone. But these are all actions that happen within the movement that aren't thought of. I don't see a guy, they don't see a guy running and jumping at their feet and think, left foot, right foot, jump. Like, it's like, no, I just react, right? And that's what lifting should be. It doesn't need to be this bracing, 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 locking down. The guys that you see doing that, they're hurt all the time. They've had catastrophic injuries like me, or they're hurt all the time. Back issues, hamstring issues, 
whatever it could be that they've made up, erect their problems, hip whatever. It's all because you guys are so fucking stiff, man. Like, stop thinking. Yeah, and you're so scared of letting, you're so scared of natural movement that it literally hinders you and locks you into these movement patterns that are like less beneficial for you. So it's like if I take someone on a fly in this, on this machine even or any fly, and I tell them to just relax with the weight out as wide as they can and sit there and understand that they're locked in their back, their pressure's back in the seat and their hands are holding that weight. So that the weight is, dis is distributed all across the frame of my body. If they can't sit there for like five seconds without being like, Ugh. and that's the problem is like, that's the overarching problem in bodybuilding nowadays is that people are not comfortable in the negative of the lift. They're not comfortable in the, in the weakest part of the lift. Therefore it compromises the whole lift. So if I can't be comfortable here at the bottom of a press and relax and catch my breath or collect myself, then how the fuck am I ever going to be confident all the way through the range? If I'm only confident here, I'm never going to be confident down here. I'm just like, uh, oh. you know what I mean? If I'm confident here, at least when I fail, it's boom, boom. I'm locked in my body. I drop the weight. Someone takes the weight, whatever it is. But you guys are just like, get that weight as far away from you as you can to start and don't let it come near you again. It's like, even on this back pull, you guys want to set the back, set the pull at a certain height and you don't want to let it go above that height and you don't want to go and you, and you only let it pull to like where you, where you feel this weird contraction. Then it's just like, like all locked down levers and all locked down tenseness. And then I'm like, and it's like, so you'd have five, you have like another foot of negative to get another foot of, of reach to get it. And you have another like four or five inches of depth. And you don't think that that's beneficial. And then you walk up, and then you get up and you walk around, and you look like the Tin Man. Like, you wonder why your body doesn't sit properly. Nothing sits on your body properly. Or you're pinched. Tense people are always pinched. They either have no traps and their shoulders are pinched together, or they have massive traps and massive delts and they can't move their body at all. But usually more than not, it's tiny traps pinched in shoulders so literally like someone pushed my shoulders together and pushed me down this is the positioning this is the the bracing guys the natural position of this like low sunken trap like barely any trap they have like a little bit of mid trap they don't have any peak to their trap because everything's just this like i tense in here i pull narrow and i press narrow so my body never opens up for me to even be able to develop a trap because my shoulder won't 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 sink down enough to allow this to happen. So I can't even grow traps. I'm just here, like in this pinch position, like really slammed in there. But I look, I look great. I don't know why I'm not winning shows. There's also another red flag when it comes to trainers. It happens, I think this happens more when people pay for like online coach, online coaching to get programs from people, which is like why I'm not, not a big fan of them is the coach or the trainer in a gym setting can be like, oh, they think deadlifts are important to build like a foundation of strength, whatever, that's debatable. I would say you're wrong, but it's debatable. And it's like, so they have these, these people doing these lifts that they deem like critical lifts, let's say, like squat, deadlift, bench, whatever it might be, right? So. As we've said before, and as people know, deadlifting and squatting is something you're built for. Not everybody's built for that. Physi like, like physique wise, like genetic wise, some people just are not built for certain lifts. I am not built for deadlifting. I am not built for squatting. So I don't do either of them, right? So they, the lifts literally cause me pain and literally have led to in so many injuries in my life. I'm not doing them again, right? So a lot of these people that get trainers, they're like, oh, we have to, we got to do deadlifts or we got to do squats because like, you know, it's going to help you become a better overall lifter. I don't know, whatever the excuses they give them. So anyway, so these people do these lifts and I've talked to like numerous people online who have reached out to me about training or asked me questions or just even stuff from my past to training people. And the, someone will come to me like, oh, my trainer like makes me do deadlifts and I pulled my back. Or I, 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 they might be squatting, my knees are fucking killing me and my hips killing me, like I can't. And it's like, so even if, 
even if you're a trainer that wants your client to do that, why aren't you breaking that down into compartmentalized like stages of teaching them how to do this lift? Or like bringing in other machines that help them understand what this lift enta like entails? And then bringing them back to the, to the lift, that main lift, when they're ready to actually perform it. Why are you just telling them, oh, we deadlift today. Oh, hold the bar, get your chest up, stand up. And then the person's like, every day they'll tell like their significant other, their friend, they won't even tell their trainer, like this really, I'm really hurt myself today. Like, and if you're like, if you're trying, if you have told your trainer that, or you have told your online coach that, like buddy, like whenever you have me do debt rear, like RDLs or um, barbell squats, like I my, fuck my, my backs kill me for like days and my IT band's fucked up and they tell you to keep doing it and just push through it, get rid of that fucking person so fucking fast that their head spins and ask for your money back at the same time. Because if they're not willing to accommodate you with the issues you're having and they're literally putting you in harm's way, because one, especially online coaching, they're not fucking teaching you how to do it. You can send me 90 videos about a deadlift. It's not the same as someone being there coaching you how to do it, like where your pressure should be on the bar. And I don't even know deadlifts that well. And I know that. And I sure as fuck wouldn't fucking deadlift without getting, getting taught by someone who's great at deadlifting and a good teacher. So it's like, if, if you're doing these lifts and, and certain things are, it could be any lift. It could be like, oh, whenever I have that, whenever I do that lat row that you want me to do, I fucking hurt myself. And they're like, no, we just keep doing it because you got to do it. It's like, it's so important. It's like, I'm sure there's an alternate we could do, or I'm sure if you have some fucking time in your day, maybe show that person how to do it properly and break down. Like if I'm going to do this pull and doing the full pull causes me, like I can't arch as much as I want. Maybe just get the person to sit here and understand to lock their shoulders and just rock with it. Like break the movement down. So it's not this full sequence. It's literally just understanding the sinking, pushing my chest forward and sinking, right? So I'm breaking it down so that they understand the beginning of the movement. So once they get comfortable in this range and they understand the actual movement, then it's like, okay, well let's pull to about three quarter and let's go out again. Or you have other issues where people, they can't, they're so, pinched forward like guys we talked about before like anterior tilted like their so shoulders are so here they can't relax it's like okay well then we're not going to have this set up for them because they don't know how to lock shoulders down because they're so tucked in it's like let's have them lay back extended and chin up because if my chin's up i can't roll my shoulders forward it's fucking impossible my chin is straight up i can't do this unless i literally start looking down but if I keep my chin up and I look up and I throw my shoulders behind me, that's teaching the person how to retract shoulders. Not maximally, but I'm still throwing my shoulders behind me as opposed to being here going, which is what the person would, would be doing. So let's find angles that work for them. Let's break down the movement for them. Hell, even start them here when you're spotting them. Have them start in the, in the, with the shoulder tucked down and have them just rock in and just engage their back rocking through so eventually they learn to lock here so when they let out they can keep tension and rock through the whole way right if you're not doing that and if your trainer isn't helping you break through these issues you're having with movement and assessing why things are happening and helping you do things on better angles or better lines you need a new trainer like it's not just do the movement because it's good for you you got to get good at it i heard a story from someone the other day that someone, I won't remain nameless, this person was told, I won't say their gender either, this person was told to do stiff leg deadlifts, right, by their coach. Came back to the coach, I don't feel these. I don't know, like, because obviously she's just not doing the right angle, whatever it may be, I said she oops. But that person's not feeling it, okay? okay. So the pers this person goes back to their coach the coach says, just do them till you feel it. Okay. And so the, the client, the client at this point, yeah. now decides to go back over to the rack or the whatever they were on, and for 45 minutes tries to feel them. It, that is your coach, tell them to fuck right off. That's not, that's not coaching, that's not anything. And if you're paying that person, they're robbing you. They might as well just put their, hand in your pocket and take your money out. And you're just like, oh, okay, I'm a bitch. Like, that's insane, man. Like, there's so much, 
there's even the, even a basic basic coach who doesn't have like this wealth of knowledge if you went up to them and said i don't feel this exercise their natural reaction as a coach and as someone who's a teacher would be like well let's figure out why i want to come come show me what you're doing even if i don't know how to fix it at least i'm taking the time to be like okay well let's try this then like yeah you don't have to do stiff leg deadlifts for your hamstrings they're not of the utmost importance guys i barely ever did stiff legs when i was coming up i did hamstring curls and i did variations of stiff legs where it was like literally li very little range of motion like to my knees and my hamstrings were just fine so i don't need to do all that shit. and it's also like so like that's what i'm saying if, if you have a coach that's not willing to help you or not willing to learn with you run for the hills feel free to comment on on your We'll have like a running tally of like reasons why you know, shit, like your, your red flags for shit trainers and we'll keep it going. Maybe I'll invite uh, someone to make a video and send it in and we'll give you one of the clips to, you can give your reasonings and go off the way I go off. So just don't get as mad as me because everyone on the internet is going to think you're depressed. <laughs> what are you going to train now? What are you doing now? I'm going to go uh, play gym for an hour. I'm gonna walk around and like, I'll like do like half an exercise and then I'm gonna sit on the bench and just text for a bit. Have fun. I really like texting on this machine. So I'm probably gonna, I think like it's a good position for me to text. Would you so like my tripod? Do I don't use tripods, Laura. All right, all right. Stop fucking spreading that rumor.